Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and today I'm going to be playing the game of Bookish Life, which I'm really excited about. It's August. Okay, I'm not excited about that. <laughs> I'm always excited to play my game. It was an interesting game this month. I'll just leave it at that. So I've been doing the game of Bookish Life since January and in January is where I talk about all my rules. I do add a couple of rules in some of my other TBRs. So if you're new here and you're interested in knowing more about this game, go ahead and check out the January video. I'll link it up here. Also, I'm changing some of the rules today. So this next little section, I'm going to be telling you my new rules. If you want to skip forward, I put timestamps down below, but my rules will change my gameplay today. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is my book cards. I have changed my book cards around a bit. Before it was always a friend or a family or some kind of pick, and I still have at least one book Book card for each of those. I decided to add a few other prompts in there that would kind of help me out a little bit as far as my TBR goes. So for example, I have one that says read an unread book from a previous TBR. And then I also have what I call the Koi Cup pick. And this is actually because of my brand new little Koi Cup. It's called the Lucky Koi Cup. I think this is the cutest little cup ever. And it has all the books from my physical TBR that I have not read in there. So this basically takes any choice out of my hands, but it does get my books onto my TBR. And then finally, I've got a few that are like, flip a coin. I got a brand new coin that's really cool. Pick from my current TBR, which is basically all my obligation reads. So I tend to have a lot of obligation reads because of buddy reads and what have you. And as you probably know from watching my game, I have a really hard time making those books work for my TBR game, my spins, because everything is so specific. I had a bit of a heart to heart talk with myself and some friends that really care about me. I need to figure out a way to make this game work more for myself. <laughs> Basically, I need to chill out. I need to chill out. And I was thinking, how can I change my game around so that it's not kicking me in the butt every single time? Or so that I don't end up with 20 books on my TBR every month? Because we, we all know at this point that I cannot read 20 books in a month. It's just not gonna happen. And I should say, because after I rolled all my rolls this month, it looks like I made these rules after I rolled these rules, but it's not true. I actually made these rule changes before doing my rolls. So just know that the new rules come into my favor quite a bit today, but that doesn't mean that I'm making them because of these horrible <laughs> rules. So the most important new rule is this, and it's kind of complicated, so bear with me. You'll see a lot of examples of it today, and so hopefully it will make sense by the end of this video. As you know, I land on a genre or diversity rep, and I land on a specific prompt. So. I'm gonna separate those two if they work with my obligation reads. For example, if I were to land on a space that is a buddy read, it's a prompt, but then it's also adult fiction. If there's a book on my obligation TBR that is an adult fiction, but not a buddy read, I can just use it as an adult fiction. Or if I have a book on my obligation read where it is a buddy read, but it's not an adult fiction, then I can use the buddy read as a prompt. Only in the case where it's a book that I am planning on reading that month anyways, can I split up the two, I say prompts, but one is a prompt and one is like a genre or diversity rep. If I don't have a book that I'm already planning on reading that fulfills one or the other, then I have to pick a book that fulfills both, just like any other normal spin normal role. So I hope this makes sense. You'll see a lot of examples of that today. Okay, so first let's go over the spins that I did in July. And as you'll probably know if you watched that video, I only had to do four spins because I finished the game. It was fantastic. If you wanna see what that looks like, go ahead and check out my July video. But for now, the first one was a romance book card family pick and my Aunt Joyce and Cousin Jenny picked Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. And this one, I'm only like 80 pages in. I really only take penalties if I plan on putting it back on my shelf and not reading it. And so I'm gonna continue reading this and this will be carried over into August. The second spin was Romance, Start a Series. And for this one, I started Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I'm reading this this week, almost halfway through, and I will finish this this week. So this one is definitely gonna be considered done. The third spin was Adult Fantasy, Booktube Friend Pick, and this one was a pick by my friend Liz from For Booking Out Loud. She picked Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, and I did finish that. Hey, I, I, things are looking okay. I'm not taking that many penalties here. Then finally, the last spin was Library Recommends, and my librarian recommended Deep. It's a book about free diving by James Nestor. I did not read this one. And I'm going to be taking a penalty for this one because I sent it back to the library. Okay, so before we get into the spins, let's look at the tallies. So it doesn't look too bad. I am in trouble if I hit a two, a four, and an eight. 
that could be a problem. Last month I hit a lot of AIDS. So we remember at the beginning, if I start at college, I have to go this way and all the books up until this stop sign or through the stop sign need to be YA. If I start at career, which is this way, these four books would need to be an adult book and I would have to add a book to my TBR. Let's see if I'm going to college or starting a career. As a reminder, one through five is college, six through 10 is career. Career, okay, <laughs> adding a book and starting at career. All right, let's start with the first roll. 10, okay, that's going pretty far for the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Buy a new tome. And that is why a other. So as you saw in the clips there, I did end up buying a new tome that was YA Other. I picked Brandon Sanderson's Skyward, which is a YA sci-fi. So I'm really excited about this one. I know I said I wasn't gonna read any Brandon Sanderson this year. I was gonna wait till next year, but this is YA. And so I figure it's okay. And I think I'm gonna love it, which is why I decided to buy a copy of it. So this is about a girl named Spensa and she has always wanted to be a pilot. Her planet is fighting for survival and the pilots in this world are very important in order to protect the planet. And she's always wanted to be one. But at some point, her father did something that was so shameful, and he was a pilot, and he ended up dying because of whatever he did, that she now has this horrible reputation through him, and she's not been able to be a pilot, because they're not allowing her to be. So I don't know what she does to change that, but I'm guessing something happens, and I'm really looking forward to finding out. So this one's 513 pages, so technically a tome, but not too bad, not too long. Also, I should point out that we're up to six spins because I went career route, and that adds one spin to my TBR. Spin number two. Oh my God, are you serious? I don't know what it is about the spinner. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is a stop sign. So a stop sign, I'm stuck here unless I can roll over a five. For this one, the prompt is why a other, book about love, romantic, or prominent relationship. All right, spin number two, why a other, again, and it's a book about love, romance, or prominent relationship. And for this, I picked Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This is an obligation read, and it's for the Lunar Along, which I will talk about more later. This is part of the new set that Magda sent me. And, oh my gosh, look at that. This is so beautiful. Thank you, Magda. So this is a YA sci-fi, another sci-fi. I'm getting all these sci-fis in this month. It's gonna be great. And this is about a girl named Cinder. And she's actually a cyborg. She's a mechanic. She's really good at what she does. And she lives with her stepmother who is awful to her, as is true in the Cinderella story, because this is a Cinderella retelling. And the planet is under attack. And she somehow gets involved with Prince Kai, who I don't know what he does or who he is, but I think that there's a romance between Cinder and Prince Kai, and she's gonna become a very important part of this fight. Spin number three. Okay, so that means I get to pass the stop sign because I'm over five. Oh, seriously. Well, there, that's an extra spin. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Book with a complicated relationship that is YA other. Ten wasn't in trouble <laughs> until it was. All right, so spin number three. I have another spin added. So now we're up to seven spins. And for this one, I ended up on YA Other again. And this was a book with a complicated relationship. So for this, I was actually able to make the August Down Memory Jane book work because it's YA Other, it's romance, YA romance. And this book definitely has a complicated relationship because it's a Mansfield Park retelling. And if you've read Mansfield Park, which I, I'm almost done with it, you'll know that there is a lot, a lot of very, very complicated relationships relationships in that book. So this is called Heart Strings and Other Breakable Things by Jacqueline Ferkins. So this is about a girl named Edie Price and she is stuck in this town called Mansfield, Massachusetts for the summer. I think she's staying with her cousins. She's about to go to college. She's the kind of girl who's really focused on her future, but her cousins are pretty frivolous and very materialistic. She doesn't vibe with that. And so they're only interested in who are the cute boys and what are the cute things we can wear and whatnot. And she's like, I I'm interested in school. I'm focusing on school. I don't have time for all these other things, but 
of course, as you can imagine, she ends up getting in this wonderful love triangle <laughs> with her best friend, Sebastian, who was her first love, and another guy named Henry, who's this bad boy player type, who she's also kind of feeling. So we'll see how this goes. I mean, I'm excited for this. I think it sounds like a lot of fun and it sounds like a nice lighthearted read. So I like those. Spin number four. I'm gonna spin it really hard. <laughs> It was too hard. Four. One, we're already at our next stop sign. So this is a book that I own, and that is Adult Horror Thriller Mystery. Since I'm at this stop sign, I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna take my penalty here and roll backwards and see what I get with that, because I do have an extra spin, my sixth spin, but I think at the moment, since I'm on my fifth spin, I'm going to roll backwards at this point for my penalty. Spin number five. Three. One, two, three. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Okay. Plus one book. Oh, shoot. I didn't even realize that's on the last spin. Spin number four, since... Uh, that was my fifth spin, so that's another plus one. So we've got a lot of plus ones. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait. <laughs> I forgot to count the career. <laughs> oh, that's four extra spins in total so far. All right, so let me get caught up really quick because I was a little lost for a second. Okay, so plus one for going the career route, plus one for landing on 10 five times. Granted, I only landed on it three times, but I already had two tallies. Plus one for landing on four, which would make it at my fifth tally, and plus one because our current prompt is a plus one book, one word and title, and that is South American representation. So this is where things started to go downhill. <laughs> So spin number four is an adult horror thriller mystery, and this is a book I own, which worked out really well because I'm reading The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. I'm only 12 pages into this because I have not had a chance to sit down and read this. And look at the writing, like, it's itty bitty. So this is an adult gothic novel set in the 16th century. I think that Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey was pretty heavily based off this book. And so I'm excited to read this and then read that book next. This is about a girl named Emily whose parents die and she ends up having to go live with her uncle. Her uncle is very wealthy. I think it's her uncle. Is it her uncle? I could be wrong. I haven't got that far into the book yet. <laughs> her uncle or some man lives in this place called Udolpho and she ends up having to live there. She feels kind of trapped. It's a spooky, scary place and she's starting to find these weird supernatural terrors is what it says. It says supernatural terrors. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So this is a mystery and it should have really atmospheric, spooky vibes based off the writing style. And I can tell you already, I'm enjoying the writing style. So for spin number five, where I had to add another spin, so now I'm up to nine total spins. This was South American Rep, one word title. And I had to add an extra spin because it was plus one spin. <laughs> so that's a fun space to land on. So this was the first one where I really had to implement my new rule. And that is to go for one or the other. So I'm gonna be using the one word title and I'm using that for catch 22. And because it has a hyphen, I consider it one word. So this is by Joseph Heller. This is a classic adult fiction. And basically it's about this guy. He's a fighter pilot in the military. He's been sent on all these really crazy missions where your chances of survival are really, really slim. But he doesn't want to do it anymore. And he can't get out of it though, because if he says he's willing to fly these horrible flights, he's considered insane. But then if he tells his commanding officers that he doesn't want to do these flights, they go, oh, well, yeah, that's smart. Of course you don't want to do them. So your, your mentality is fine. You're ineligible for being relieved from duty. So you have to go do it. And so basically it's a catch 22 because you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. <laughs> Thing number six. Five. One, two, three. We have to stop at the stop sign. I'm glad it's five because that's something different. A book I own, adult sci-fi. Ooh, I like adult sci-fi. Okay, spin number six, adult sci-fi and a book I own. I'm implementing my rule again because this is a book I want to get on my TDR this month and it's Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip Dick. This is an adult sci-fi, but I don't own it. I have a 
library copy. So I'm really excited about this one. It's actually set in 2021, which I think is really cool. So it's about our planet where we have basically destroyed all the creatures, all the animals, and most people have left the planet, but there are some that have stayed behind and have created sheep and different kind of animals to, to survive off of. But then also they've created androids, which are so close to humans and so scary for the people that have survived on, on Earth because they're afraid the androids are going to take over, that they have sent all the androids off the planet. But of course, because they're so similar to humans, they're able to kind of blend in. And so there's actually a man named Rick Deckard, who's a bounty hunter, who's supposed to eradicate all of these androids. And he has to try to figure out how he can identify them before he gets killed by one of the androids. And so I'm really looking forward to this one, actually. I love the size of it. And I'm really excited about reading some more sci-fi. So this month's gonna be a month of sci-fi. And also, please forgive my light situation. This has gone a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> Okay, now let's find out if I'm passing the stop sign. Remember, I have to spin over a five in order to pass stop. Let's see, let's see. Am I stuck here, am I not? Spin number seven. I'm stuck here, okay. All right, adult fantasy. Actually, that's a good one. I like that one. Adult fantasy book I own that is perfect. That will fulfill my one of my prompts. I'm not gonna complain about that. Okay, two more spins, two more spins. Oh, see, I keep forgetting to mark my tallies, so I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> this is why I keep getting into trouble. All right, mark your tallies, Amy. Adult fantasy was a two. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, I landed on a two. A two gives me an extra book. Well, I'm hitting all my tallies that were in trouble this time. So now we're up to 10 spins. <laughs> All right, so spin number seven. I'm losing track of everything. I'm losing track of my brain. Adult fantasy book I own, and for this one, I need to read The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. We move this one forward, and going forward, Magda Shell and I are gonna read these every other month, which will help me out immensely because, as you can see, I'm struggling, and yeah. This is a nice, chunky, let's see, how many page book is this one? 850 pages. I'm loving this series so much. Really, really loving this series. And this is actually about the Vestrit family. And they have what you call a live ship. And the live ship comes to life after the third generation in a family dies on the ship. So their ship Vivacia has just recently come alive. And there's a question as to who is going to captain the ship. Althea, the younger daughter of the Vestrits, believes she has the right. There's a few others that think they have the right. And this book actually has a lot of different point of views. So I really, really loved what happened in the first book. I'm so looking forward to finding out what happens next. We didn't get a lot resolved in the first book, which was okay because we were building these people's characters, the storyline, but I can't give you too much more information because I don't want to give anything away. All right, time for spin number eight. Let's see if I can roll over a five. <sighs> yes, okay, I rolled over five. I don't have to count eight on that one because that's just my see if I press stop. Nine, okay, nine's good. I can do nine. Nine is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that in the shot still? LGBTQ plus IA rep, book from an other booktuber. All right, spin number eight. No plus ones for this book, thankfully. So this one was LGBTQ plus representation and a book from another booktuber. And to be honest, when I read that prompt, I don't know what I meant. I, I knew what I meant when I first wrote it, but I don't know what I meant for it now. <laughs> I was like, is it a book that I got a recommendation for another booktuber? But then I do have a spot on here that's book recommendation from another booktuber. So I don't think that's it. Is it a book that I physically received from another booktuber? That could possibly be it. I will probably take this prompt off and put something else on because there's a lot of better prompts out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement the rule anyways for this round and just go with LGBTQ plus representation. I'll be reading The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. And this is the Broken Earth trilogy, which I'm in love with. I loved the first book. It was very difficult, not an easy read, but it was fantastic. And if you wanna know about that book, Spoiler, spoiler heavy, but we did do a live show over on Liz from For Booking Out Loud's channel. And I will be doing a live show for this on my channel at the end of August or the beginning of September, probably. This is an adult sci-fi fantasy mix. And it's about the end of the world, which happens over and over again on this planet. 
humankind is constantly being killed off and having to come back and being killed off and try to survive these end of the world events that happen every hundred to every thousand years. The planet is basically mad at mankind and keeps punishing it. But there is this class of people called the Origines and Origines are magical because they're able to manipulate the earth. And unfortunately that means that, that sometimes they can be very volatile and they can actually destroy a lot of life with their abilities, which makes the other humans frightened of Origines and treat them horribly, keep them under servitude and control them completely. And there's a lot of themes discussed in this that I think are really important themes. So if you haven't had a chance to read it, all I can really say about the first book, The Fifth Season, is to give it 80 to 100 pages because it's very complicated in the beginning and it's beautifully done. Like the complication is intended and I thought it was fantastic, but you do need to get past that first chunk to really understand what's going on in the story. Spin number nine. This is ridiculous. Let's see where we're going for this. Getting nine again. I don't know what to say. I, I, I don't like you. I don't like you at all. <laughs> one, two. We have to see which way we're going to go. If I spin one through five, we'll go to the right. If I spin six through ten, we'll go to the left. So let's see where I'm going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At least I'm getting some different prompts this time around. Book with transportation on the cover. That's YA fantasy. All right, spin number nine, YA fantasy, book with transportation on the cover. So for this one, I'm actually going to implement my rule again. You're going to see this most of this video. <laughs> And because I'm getting so many darn spins, I don't feel bad about it at all. I needed all the help I could get. And so for this one, I'm going to be using Maiden Voyages by Sean Evans. This was a nonfiction book that I had planned on reading last month. The publisher had reached out to me and asked me to read it. It's a NetGalley arc and I didn't get around to it. So I would like to read it this month. So it's basically the history of women working and traveling on cruise ships. And so I don't know much else besides that, but it's got a nice cruise ship on the cover. So I think it works perfectly for the book with transportation on the cover prompt. So it's not gonna count for the YA fantasy, but that's okay. <laughs> Roll number 10. Fingers crossed everybody, we don't land on a three. Oh no, now we're in trouble with nine. Okay. That wasn't really, really fast. Huh. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Book with a beautiful cover. And this is LGBTQIA plus rep. All right, so we're up to 11 spins and I'm numb. <laughs> So let's talk about spin number 10. This was LGBTQ plus representation, a book with a beautiful cover. And again, I'm gonna go with another book that I need to get on my TPR. And I'm gonna use the book with a beautiful cover. This copy I have doesn't have, to me, the most beautiful cover. However, there is an edition of this which has a gorgeous cover. And I'm gonna show that to you here. Hey, it's Editing Amy here. So I had a bit of a hard time giving a synopsis for this book because it's really vague. It was really, really vague on the back of the book and when I looked into Goodreads and whatnot. But this is a fiction and I'm pretty sure this is a book that has a lot of different stories in it. Meaning it's one story, but it has a lot of different individual perspectives or stories within it that make up an idea of what urban Ojibwe life is like in Minneapolis. Although I think that it goes back in time to the beginning of Minneapolis as like a trade center and then all the way through the current period of, well, current period being 1998 when this was written, but the current period of Minneapolis being a big city. So it brings together this story about all these different Ojibwe tribal members who are living within the city, I think. I'll find out once I read it. But I'm looking forward to this because I think her writing style is gorgeous and I can't wait to read more. Spin 11. <laughs> One, okay, I like one. Oh, one, one is nice. One is middle grade, my choice. All right, spin number 11 was our final spin, thank goodness. And last but not least, middle grade, my choice. Well, as you could probably guess, I'm gonna implement my rule again. If I have to read 11 for this round, I'm gonna get all the books that I need to read on there. So I picked The Lost City of Z by David Grand. This is a nonfiction book. It's my August real life nonfiction book club pick. And I'm excited about reading this one because this one is actually about a British explorer named Percy Fawcett who went to the Amazon rainforest to find the lost city of Z. It's this ancient civilization he believed was there and just has never been discovered. And he went missing. And David Gran and I think his son actually went to the Amazon to try and discover what they could about Percy Fawcett. There's actually been a movie made about it, which I would really like to see 
after reading the book. 11 books? I don't think that's possible, especially in August, because the first week I'm doing a big giant scavenger hunt. And so we'll see what gets done. I'm probably gonna have a lot of penalties come September, but that's okay. <laughs> At least I got all these extra spins out of the way before school started. Okay, so now that we figured out all my spins for the month, let's look at Buddy Reads. TBR challenges. And I will say I'm not doing any readathons in the month of August. So that's good because I need a break. <laughs> so for my buddy reads, I'm reading The Mysteries of Udolfo with Beth Ann Bernega Sokolar. We're reading it as preparation for Northanger Abbey. Oh, and I just found out that Sandy from Miss Reads A Lot is going to join us in our Mysteries of Udolfo buddy read, which I'm really excited about because I really like Sandy. Second, I'm reading The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison with Liz from For Booking Out Loud. If you didn't get a chance to check out our first live show, check it out. It's on Liz's channel. I'll link it in the description box below. And we'll be doing the live discussion for The Obelisk gate on my channel probably the beginning of September. Yeah, probably. Next is Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. I'll be doing a buddy read of this with Magda and Shell, and we will eventually do a discussion of this. <laughs> I just don't know when. And finally, Catch 22 by Joseph Heller. When I said I was going to be reading this, one of my subscribers, Sonia, said I would like to read it too. So we're going to be reading it together, and I'm excited about this one. I'm probably going to listen to it on audiobook, so we'll see how that goes. Next, for Trash My TBR, books that I need to get done before the end of September, I've got Dr Android's Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip Dick and The Antelope Woman by Louise Erdrich. And the nice thing about both of these is they're small. So keep an eye out. I will be doing Trash My TBR vlogs for both of these books. Might do them together. Next, let's talk about Lunar Along. Lunar Along is a read-along that I'm doing with Danielle from Bukhara. And I'm really excited to do this. We have a Discord channel where we have a lot of people already joined up. I've never read this. I've heard amazing things from so many different people. And I'm really excited to chat with everybody about this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'll be doing mid-month sprints on my channel in August. And then we'll do a live show on my channel at the end of August. So if you haven't ever read this series or you want to reread it, come join us. We have a great group of people participating and I can't wait to get into this and start discussing. Finally, for the book covered book club, I could not add any more books to my TBR this month because I'm trying to keep my TBR shorter, right? But the book covered book club theme this month is Big Bloom. So what I decided to do was pick up a graphic novel and I'm going with How to Be Happy by Eleanor Davis. And this has a big bloom on the cover. But it's basically a whole bunch of short stories. It's not necessarily like a self-help book on how to be happy. It's stories surrounding happiness. But then I also heard from a lot of the reviews that this is actually very satirical and kind of melancholy. So I'm interested. And finally, these next couple of books are possibilities because I would really like to get to them. But I already have a ton of books on this TBR. Not 20. Not 20. I definitely reduced it down. It's not 20. <laughs> I want to get to these, but if I don't get to them, then they'll have to be pushed through the next month. So the first one is A Flight of Broken Wings by Nipur Chowdhury. This is a YA fantasy that the author actually reached out to me personally and said, hey, can you please read my books? And I said I would when I get a chance. I gave a bit of a synopsis of that book in my last video, so if you're interested in checking it out, check out my July TPR. So then finally, one of my subscribers who is representing an author, Carol Van Strump, reached out to me and asked me if I would take the time to read this book called A Bitter Fog, which is in its third edition, it was originally published in 1983, but now it's being re-released in 2021. This is a nonfiction story about a small community in Oregon that was actually getting Agent Orange sprayed on them, these herbicides that were really, really dangerous as we know about Agent Orange. And so this is a story about their attempt to fight for their homes and the survival of their family members because there were a lot of health issues that came about with the spraying of Agent Orange. And so one of the reasons that this is being kind of re-released is because there's actually a documentary coming out called The People vs. Agent Orange, which premieres June 28th on PBS by Independent Lens. And then also this film has kind of prompted some new legislation in Maine, the state of Maine, that they're no longer allowed to do any aerial spraying with herbicides or anything like that. So that's really good news. And so it sounds like this book was a great influence for these things that are happening now. Sadly, the kind of legislation it takes to change things sometimes takes a long time. I'm excited to read this. It's definitely at the forefront of environmentalism. So it was really exciting to have someone reach out to me and I hope to read it this month. If not, I will make sure that I get to it next month. All right, so that's it. So my rule uh, was supposed to help, right? And it did, it's not 20 books. And quite a few of these are short books. So that's good, right? Ugh. Yeah, this was a mess. This was a total, total mess. But if you want to see more of a mess, stick around for Magda Spins. I will be doing that at the end of this video and it goes just as poorly for her as it did for me. <laughs> if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see how I do this month with my 11 spins, which means 11 books that I have to read or else I get penalties. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Bye. 
All right, so now it's Mags' turn. I have collected myself. I feel better now, but I still am prepared to laugh heartily at <laughs> any extra spins or any hard prompts that Magda gets because I have no sympathy anymore. <laughs> so Magda ended off her last round on ATC in title. Okay, let's look at Magda's tallies. She is in trouble. Ooh, she's in trouble in a lot of ways. If she lands on a three, a six, a nine, or a 10. Spin one. Three. Three gives Magda an extra spin. That's just terrible. <laughs> one, two, three. Oh, I'm excited about this one. I haven't ever landed on this and I'm so glad that I'm not the one that landed on it. <laughs> this one is a very special one. Before I go into the whole stock card bit, let me tell you what the prompt and the genre is. So the genre is adult fiction and the prompt is Instapol and so what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna go on Magda's want to read list on Goodreads, pick three books, put it on my Instagram as a poll, and we'll see what Magda's gonna end up with. Now the tricky part of this is that it is pick a stock card to add, meaning add extra spins. So we have four stock cards here, and they all have one, two, three, four. I'll shuffle them. I'm gonna pick one, and whatever is on that one that I pick, is how many rolls we're adding to Magda's turn. Okay. All right, how many are we adding? I think we're gonna add this. Oh, you got so lucky, Magda. That was one. Okay, we're adding one spin. For Magda's first spin, she got adult fiction Instagram poll. So I put a poll on Instagram, which not very many people replied to, but I did get some votes and I put three books up there that are on Magda's TBR that are, I would consider adult fiction. And the first one was Don Quixote. The second one was Little Women. And the third one was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And for this one, the Lost Apothecary one, by far, it got four votes, whereas the other two only got one vote each. And this one is basically about a female apothecary who is dispensing poison to women to get rid of the men who have wronged them, which I think is fascinating. <laughs> Spin number two. One, okay, that's not bad. One is a book card and that's middle grade. Koi cup pig. <laughs> For spin number two, Magda got a middle grade book card, Koi cup pig. So since this is her TBR, I wanna make sure she ends up reading books that she was planning on reading. What I decided to do was do a random number generator of her TBR. And since we landed on middle grade, I decided to go with her middle grade selection. So as you can see here, Magda has 67 books on her middle grade TBR list. And when I did the random number generator, we got number 11, which is The Fire Within by Chris DeLacy. And so this book is basically about little clay dragons that come to life and I'm guessing do the magical things. So I think this sounds cute and I'm interested to hear what Magda thinks about it. Spin number three. Seven, okay. One, two, three. Okay, so we're gonna have to see if we go to the left or to the right. We'll say left, one through five, right, six through 10. So let's see where Magda's going. She's going to the left. So if we started here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Book with people on the cover, that's pretty simple. And the representation for this is seven is Europe, Australian representation. Spin number four. 10, 10 uh, gives you another spin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Translated book, ooh, it's even more tricky because that's YA other. All right, spin number five. Four. Four is safe. You don't have any extra spins so far. One, two, three, four. A book with a hero. And that one is an adult horror thriller mystery. Hmm. Spin number six. 10. You're safe with 10 because you already got an extra one from the 10, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this one is YA Other, and that is a book with a competition or a race. Spin number seven, let's see if you're gonna stick with eight spins in total. Four, 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 four. 
You're still safe on four. One, two, three, four. All right, so this is a book that's pre-2000, so adult horror thriller mystery that was written pre-2000. All right, this, Magda, could very well be your last roll. Fingers crossed. It's gonna be roll number eight. Nope, it's not your last roll. Because <laughs> six gives you an extra spin. I wasn't thinking in my head, land on six, land on six, land on six. <laughs> I wasn't, I swear. One, two, three, four, five, six. oh, oh, Magda, oh, <laughs> no, plus one book, oh, oh dear, sorry, I, I just wished ill on you, didn't I, what a horrible person, <laughs> diversity rep of North America, not US, so basically Canada, Mexico, one of the other countries that are technically in North America, but not part of the US. And this has to be a book that's over 750 pages. Wow. Spin number nine. Eight. You're safe with eight, Magda. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Respin and move backwards. Okay, eight doesn't count actually. Three. Three you're okay with. And let's move back three. One, two, three. A book giveaway. Let's just call that a my choice. We're gonna call that a my choice adult fiction. Spin number 10, final spin. Eight. Ooh, that was close, Magda. <laughs> All right, let's try eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, no, eight doesn't count. <laughs> Respin and move backwards. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Respin and move backwards. Okay, that doesn't count again either. <laughs> I keep working my tallies so I stay on top of it and I just have to keep erasing them. All right, let's see now we're going. One. I think that's the end of this game. I think that is the end of this game. <laughs> I think we made it. TBR random number generator. Oh, that's easy. That's kind of like one of the other ones we had for you. But that is middle grades. All right, spin number 10, Magda's final spin. This was fantastic. This was fantastic. Magda, you and I get to suffer together. <laughs> So for this one, it was middle grade again, and this was actually a TBR random number generator. So I basically did the same thing. I took one through 67 on the random number generator, and we ended up on power play for Kingdom Keepers, which is the fourth in the series. So I decided to go with the first one, which Magda hasn't read yet, and that is Disney After Dark by Ridley Pearson. So this is a fantastical novel about Disney's Magic Kingdom. There are these kids that get brought on as tour guides, I think, in Disney World, and they end up getting to go around the park and show guests different things as holograms. And I think that things go wrong from there. That's it, Magda. Those are all your spins, all 10 of them. And I hope you and everybody else has a really fun reading month. Bye.